Hello, how are you? Welcome to Trapping the Time. My name is Pablo, and today I'm going to review one of the cheapest automatic watches for divers that you can find on the market. The Invicta Pro Diver. Why is it so cheap? Come with me and we'll see. The first thing I have to say is that to buy this watch, it was basically for two reasons. The first is my eagerness to investigate it for the channel, and the second is definitely its incredibly cheap price. I should add that if it wasn't for that, I would never have added this piece to my collection. There's only one thing I don't forgive in my watches, and that's wanting to appear uh, more than it really is. In this case, not only to imitate as many brands do, by the way, that iconic design of the Rolex Submariner. Well, I could forgive it, but what I don't like is the brand name engraved on the box. But having said that, I'm going to be as objective as possible. Parking, my personal tastes when evaluating this watch, that looks great and is nice and cheap. But is it? Where's the trick? At first it's difficult to understand because in your hand the final result is very similar to other watches that multiply the price of this one two or three times. But how do they do it? Nothing in it is outstanding, but everything is more than worthy. Materials, finishes. There's nowhere to find a fault that'll make you say, see, this is why it's so cheap. That just doesn't happen. But let's say we shouldn't maybe be surprised by that either. It's very good for the price, although both the materials and the finishes are close, but not up to the standards of example, the Orient uh, or the Seiko. But look, just who am I comparing it to? If you want to understand why it's so cheap, it's probably got a lot to do with the fact that if you copy designs that you already know work, then you don't have to invest in a lot of staff and equipment for this important task. In addition to copying, or rather cloning, other designs, you also make your production enormous. You're going to get better prices on components, whether it's the cases, calibers, bracelets, crystals, etc. And if all this material is bought and assembled in China, I don't know that it is, but I would deduce that it is, then that's how you can make a watch with a price that's really difficult to find in the market. The Pro Diver is available in various box sizes. Perhaps the 40mm is the most demanded measure, but there's also like this one which is 42mm and another one called the Grand Diver. It has 47mm case and it might be the best size for my wrist. But I don't like the lateral engraving of this one. I, I don't like, I like the Grand Diver even less because it exhibits that arrogance and that's more why I disregarded it for the moment. Hello. I say already that the measure would have been better for my wrist than this 42mm one, which for me is a little small to be a diver's watch. Whichever way you look at it, there's nothing about this watch that you can tell at first glance why it's so cheap. What makes you think it has to be the profit margin that other brands have if this watch can be sold at this price and still be profitable? Because Invicta will sell a lot, but they don't outsell Seiko, that's for sure. Why are Seiko's cheapest mechanical dive watches triple the price of this one? Are they three times better? And the answer to that question must be answered by whoever is evaluating their purchase. Although the materials and finishes of this Invicta are more than worthy. They are one step behind the Japanese, but in price they are three. I don't know if I'm explaining myself very well here. There's, there's less differences in quality than the price should allow for. The hands, the indices, the bezel and its drive, the screw down crown, even the quality of the case or case back and of course the calibre are very similar to other more expensive dive watches. Are there differences? Yes, but they're just nuances. In general, it's impressive that such a cheap watch is built with more than acceptable quality materials. Finishes might be a bit below the, com the competition, but the difference is so small that it's difficult to say where they are. One of them that's noticeable is the vastness of the front brushings on the lugs, with a finish that looks like it was done by a drunk with a file. It doesn't have the same gauge or thickness or depth almost anywhere in the lugs. Another would be the poor quality of the link end. That's the, the front piece of the, the bracelet. 
it's hollow, not very well finished, which can also scratch the box when it's activated, but I'm afraid that happens with almost all cheap watches and bracelets. If you turn it over, the image of, again, more than acceptable quality follows, with a cover that lets us see the movement with its oscillating weight painted yellow and skeletonized. In general, the impression it gives is of being a much more expensive watch than it is. Let's see, if you manage to forget its original sin, which, as I said before, is shared with a multitude of divers from many brands, well, that mythical design must be the most copied one in the history of watchmaking. But there will be a lot of people who don't know or don't care, who just want to buy a beautiful, well-made watch that's more than remarkable value for money. And what you really have in your hands here is a fantastic watch for that price. A serious candidate for those who want to try their first automatic watch without spending too much with certain quality guarantees. I myself have to admit, although I'm not attracted to the design, the more I look at it, the more it convinces me because the truth is the dial is very attractive with those indices applied in three ways, most of them around 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock in the shame of a bar and at 12 o'clock triangular. At 3 o'clock there is no marker, what there is is the data framed in metal and enlarged by the Cyclops. The truth is that in this I'm not able to appreciate the differences with other more expensive watches. The hands are familiar ones, Mercedes on the R, sword in the minute, and the lollipop second hand in green, counterbalanced with the Invicto logo. Very pretty indeed. It also gives it a splash of colour that goes great with the green half of the bezel. Hands and markers have that greenish luminescent paint, and in contrast to the black dial they look great, although those indices are certainly small in size when compared to other diving watches. Below 12 o'clock we see the logo, name of the brand applied, and above the six legends that refer to the type of movement as a resistance to water. There's no ring between the dial and the bezel, we can see the inside of the case and it's brushed steel much better than at the lugs. The bezel is two-tone aluminium, green between 3 and 9 o'clock, and the other half is black. Between 12 and 3 o'clock it has painted R minute markers that indicate 10 by 10 in Arabic numerals that alternate with bar markers on the R. Instead of 60 is the classic triangle of the divers, filled with a drop of luminous paint. All in all, I find it so remarkable that it's hard to understand why it's so cheap. But I'm not only talking about the aesthetic so achieved, but also about the functionality. The bezel is unidirectional and its turning mechanism amazingly functional. It's tough, it clicks well, what you'd expect from a diver's bezel. The crown, the same, large, well protected by the appendages of the case and with a super nice touch and quality, even superior to some Swiss watches that don't offer that feeling that this one does, in which you have that return of information, that touch that connects you with the watch. And I uh, have some much more expensive watches than this one that don't have that. But of course, what's inside the Seiko Calibre? One very similar to one of my Seiko King Samurai. With all that means quality and reliability. Among other things, also say that that screwed crown and therefore fully functional to submerge it without fear. The bracelet is not the best quality, but from apart from the first hollow piece, the rest pretty good for what you can expect at that price. The closure has a double click and a micro perforations for a perfect fit. What it does not have is an extensive, uh, sort of an extension for neoprene, but I think that's too much to ask for this sort of money. And I have a little more to say about that wonderful watch for the price that it creates a lot of contradictions in me that I could summarise in one. I don't like it because blah blah blah, but actually I love it because it's beautiful, it's functional, and above all, it, it's cheap. It sets the bar so high in mechanical divers under 100 euros that I don't know if I'm going to find it a rival to challenge for that scepter. I'm already awarding this Invicta Pro Diver best mechanical diver for less than 100 euros. If you know any, please let me know in the comments. The truth is, I would love to find a rival for this. With that said, now we're going to talk about something that we've never done before, which is gauge its accuracy. In this case, it's not an in-house movement, but rather it's purchased from Seiko. It's uh, worth the same to us to assess the reliability and precision of the watch. 
we've done this test by downloading an application to track its accuracy of each of the watch's calibers for several days. In this case, the Invicta Pro Diver, and the result uh, has been surprising. Well, as you can see on the phone, February the 4th at 11.20am, we calibrated the Invicta with the atomic clock that the application has. It gave us a value of minus one second. This was day 4, 10, 30, and two days later, it gave us a value of plus 10. In total, the average accuracy is plus 6.55 seconds a day. During the seven days that we measured the Invicta, the result was plus 11.92 seconds. The first two at rest and the next five using it. Pretty good numbers. Let's see now, the measurements and specifications of this Invicta Pro Diver. It's a tool watch for divers, analog, three hands and date. It's entirely made of stainless steel, a mounts of Seiko caliber NH35 that has approximately 40 hours of power reserve with a stop seconds hand and manual winding. It is a stainless steel bracelet, glass is mineral and measurements are 42mm in diameter, 48mm lug to lug, 14.2mm high, 22mm wide bangle. Finally, its price is between 60 and £100, about $100 on average. And the last thing I'm going to do before I say goodbye is change the bracelet for a leather strap. I don't like uh, these cheaper ones uh, even less. But I would like to know what you think. What, what's your opinion? Do you like it better with a bracelet? Or like me, do you find it more attractive with a good leather strap? If you want to, write in the comments and we will uh, share it. And nothing more. Uh, so for today's video, that's it. Hope you liked it. And if so, please subscribe, comment, share. Your collaboration helps us to continue growing. Thanks for being there. And if you want to see the next video, uh, join us. And hopefully we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.